Dude, hell yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for That's joining. Nice. How, how are you, sir? My pleasure. I'm doing great, kind of. I just got two teeth removed um, earlier this week. So Ooh. if I talk a bit weird at times, um, it, it kind of hurts still. But um, I'm happy that I'm here. <laughs> hell yeah, we are too, brother. Uh, for those that may not be familiar with you, sir, could you please introduce yeah. yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at this moment. Plug and promote and anything and everything. Okay, so my artist name is Inhuman, obviously. Um, I started producing, like, professionally producing as uh, Code Pandorum, um, I think back in 2015 or 16 or something like that. Um, kind of built my own little world, like, in this death step, harder dubstep realm a bit. Um, that's where most people know my name from. And I think right before Corona hit, um, I rebranded everything um, because I was kind of going through a rough time with my old project and everything. Um, and I just needed to do something new. And that's uh, like when the, the whole Inhuman project unfolded. And that's where I am right now. And um, yeah, how should I describe my music? That's kind of a hard question, I think. Um, it's somewhere between EDM and metal and industrial sounds and whatever the fuck inspires me, to be honest. Um, and, and that's just what I do. I just found an outlet to just uh, produce whatever I like on my own. And um, I think that's what matters most when it comes to music. And most people forget that, kind of. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, I, I, first I want to start with what do you recall a particular artist or album in the EDM community going back to 2015 that you mm -hmm. picked up that made you say, this is what I want to do? Um, that's pretty easy. There is um, an artist called Brett Killer, B-R-A-T-K-I-L-L-A. -L -L -A, and it was oh, actually the um, Death Step LP that kind of caught my attention the most. Um, because it was the first time that I heard dubstep, but different and way harder than I ever heard before. And um, that really inspired me to just take it to another level and really go into the more orchestral side as well. Um, yeah, and just getting inspired by different stuff instead of just dubstep because, I mean, back in the days it was even more than nowadays, but even nowadays the most dubstep is like really, really cheesy when it comes to the sound. And it's it, it does sound kind of childish if that makes sense and it's really hard to kind of get a twist and find a sound in dubstep that is i don't know i i don't want to put myself up there or something but sounds more professional or more adult if that makes sense sure i think you you get my idea definitely uh metallic who's my co-host today is an absolute huge fan of yours i know he's itching That's to ask amazing. a couple of questions metallic take it away well i i think he may recognize me from a couple posts I've made uh, in the past. I think uh, so, yeah. yeah, yeah I, so I'm the one that advocated for you to put Burnout with Mantis for like two full years. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah, damn. I've, I posted about that for like two fucking yeah. years straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, oh, I was so happy that, that one came out. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. You you and Mantis are like my top like producers. That oh, that's, that's awesome. Me. That's oh, yeah. awesome. I'm I'm actually still in contact with uh, with Mantis with one of Mantis. Uh, I think back in the days it was two people. Now it's just one guy. Oh, now um, it's just one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, but he he just sent me some new stuff, and it's pretty crazy. They kind of go back to the roots and back to the sound. So you yeah. will like it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure. Sweet. Anything by them and you has been amazing. And just to have them you, mixed with you with the Inhuman style will be a whole new next level thing oh absolutely it would be different for sure because yeah. honestly you as code w that was a great fucking project it, thank it you was man. one thank of you. your best projects honestly and speaking speaking whole... of code could you mm -hmm. could you briefly talk about how difficult it is to rebrand everything that you've built and kind of start over um so the thing is, for me, I I was kind of forced to rebrand um, because with the code project, I got into a burnout, like a pretty, pretty bad burnout. And it, it just came because um, the whole code project was kind of tied to a really bad time in my life um, because I kind of grew up with it. Like I started when I when I was 15, I started making music when I was 15 and 
really, really soon after that, I think when I was like 17 or something, I started the code project because the first people asked me, okay, um, do you want to play a show with us? It was someone from Paris, um, big shout out to Drop and Bass here. Um, and they kind of kickstarted. Yeah, absolutely. And they kind of kickstarted my career with that. And um, I I needed a branding. That's why I put on the mask and everything. Because back in the days, I, I was a kid, you know. I, I looked like a baby. So I made this <laughs> aggressive fucking music. And someone asked, asked to book me and was like, okay, do you want to play here? And I'm like, yeah, I would love to play here. But my face does not fit my music at all. What should I do? And then I just put a mask because I'm a massive horror movie fan and stuff. Um, and I get inspired from that a lot. Um, and, um, yeah, because of this whole situation, um, I kind of got forced into making something out of this project and just work with that. And then, um, when you're young, you get into relationship, uh, relationships. Some of them are more toxic than they should be and so on and so on. You guys have been through that as well, I guess. Um, and yeah, everything in that time was kind of tied to the Code Pandorum project. And that's why I kind of had to rebrand. And yes, it was difficult, but only because everything I kind of invested um, for a longer time span. So let, let's say when you start a project, you obviously need some kind of money um, to just get into the branding, artworks, visuals. Um, you maybe want to step up like your studio and whatsoever. Everything is money, right? And when you start with 15 and you kind of build it step by step and you make shitty music at the beginning, you get better and better and grow with this project. When you're at the point that you rebrand, you have to invest all the money that you invested like over the time frame again to start a new project, but just now, because obviously it's my my full time job and I I would not be able to do this um, with kind of a money gap like between the two projects. Mm -hmm. So I had to had to be like, OK, how do I do this? And then then I found like some some uh, promoters and some people that just helped me with that. I found a new manager who helped me immensely. And um, honestly, my now wife was a big help as well. Um, so it it worked out way better than I expected at the beginning, I think, um, just because I got the support from from amazing people. So hell yeah, yeah. I, I, I do want to do some trivia with you. It takes me a couple of minutes to look up trivia, which I'll have Metallic ask some more questions at that point. But you said sure. you were you said you were a horror fan. Is there a particular mm -hmm. horror movie that you've seen so many times where if I ask you trivia on this horror movie, you will not get it wrong? Oh, oh, Jesus. Um, you get to pick the movie, though. Uh-huh. Um, which one did I watch the most? I think it's Martyrs. M-A-R-T-Y-R-S. It's a French movie. M-A-R-T-Y-R-S? Yeah. All right. Uh, Vitalik, ask a question, too. It's going to take me a minute to look that one up. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I can find that one, but I'm going to try. Sorry for taking the most. Are, how, how many ever? different... Okay, so I know you've had a couple different masks since Phoebe yeah. was kind of, like, led into that. Uh, between Code and Inhuman, how many have you had and what inspired each, like, iteration? Um. So the, the Code project started with the literally the God Mask from The Perch. Like, that was the initial idea. I saw that movie right after that guy asked me to play the show, and I was like, okay, I will just get that mask, and fuck it, I will just do it to have something, you know? And out of that, this whole kind of God branding built from itself, because people just went with it, you know? And people just called me that, and it, it was a crazy time, honestly. Um, and then I was like, okay... Um, I got an email from Universal and they wanted to sue me because I used that mask. And I was like, oh, my goodness. oh I'm, I'm 17 years old and they want to sue me for like 20,000 bucks or something. I will not do that again. So I had to get like something new and I just wanted to have like a fresh rebuilt mask that looks similar though because I, I had that branding now, you know. Um, so I got that mask. Um, that mask done. I think it's, oh, it's actually upstairs, I think. Um, but after that, um, it turned into some kind of iteration of that mask with just my logo on the forehead instead of the god. It was the same mask, just re-skinned pretty much, if that makes sense. Um, and then after that, I got another mask that was just completely white um, because I made a bigger rebranding. And as I said, the whole music time, the, the whole time I made music was a lot of myself growing up like as a as a person. 
And so my mask had to grow up as well. My logo kind of grew up. Um, my music just sounded more professional and everything. So it was like a, just a fresh skin. And um, I always like the, yeah, the Halloween Michael Myers mask and everything. That's a big inspiration, obviously. Um, yeah, and after that, uh, it turned into the Inhuman mask. And the Inhuman mask is built out of many pieces so it's more like a modular mask and i can put it together however i want it's pretty crazy and it's literally like 10 different masks in one um, wow do you use the same person oh, wow. to to make each one of these masks or do you make them yourself actually it was different people all the time um so first it was one guy called faceless studio i think but he does not make masks anymore um after that it was a guy called oh my god um some some special effects guy from America and now it's a guy from Berlin um, who makes for example he made the um, the stage design for Bring Me the Horizon on their Europe tour. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So um, he he knows what he does and he he's a maniac. Like he he has this little room. It it looks like a literally like a like a child's paradise. Everywhere it's like toys and different masks and stuff. And he's crazy. He's like a like a weird as fuck mechanic or something. <laughs> that is cool. I want to. I want to hang yeah. out with that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll be honest. That face, the faceless brand mask, was probably mm -hmm. one of your most iconic. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Definitely. Sven, you are about to get stumped, my friend. This is Martyrs trivia. <laughs> oh my god. I, I will. Oh no! Don't do that. <laughs> At the end of the movie. Yeah. What? does Anna whisper what I does mean, you, you you don't hear it in the movie right that is correct we do not know that is correct it was a trick question it was a trick question I am absolutely the best we do not know what she says it's been landing on that all day been landing all right, on. another one. Sven, <laughs> is is cannabis legal in in Germany? I'm unaware. Uh, they are working on it, um, so they are kind of so in Germany. The thing is, they always have to run through the new um, the new rules and everything at least 500 times or something until they are sure that they will allow something or not. So it it might take a year. It might take 20 years until it's legal. I don't know. What's what's a what's a DJ that we would that we might know uh, like a household name DJ that's somebody that you have never worked with before that you'd like to collab with someday? Um, good question. Mm, really good question, actually. Um, do you know Noisia? Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you know the project Sleepnet from Nick from Noisia? No, I do not. Okay, then go to Spotify now and check one song for me. <laughs> under <laughs> uh, under Noisia. Uh, it's uh, sleep net. Um, oh, it's under name. sleep mat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this that. This is a side spelled, project for sp one of the uh, masters, isn't it? Uh, sleep N E T. Um, yeah, it's it's Nick from Noisy. It's one solo project, pretty much. Um, and the song is called Love No More. Just just listen to that song until the first drop, and you know why I want to work with this guy. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's, it it's so different. Yeah, that, that's and, along the lines of what you're making right now. It, it kind of is. He's a big inspiration for sure. And one that, guy is, um, I, I made some remixes for him, but I did not work with him yet, is Apache. Okay. Oh. Um, he's definitely a big inspiration too. And he's he's a great person as well. He was one of the first guys to support my rebranding pretty much. Um, so I appreciate that a lot. And I would love to work on a song with him. Would be crazy, I think. Uh, Metallic, one more, one more question. Or whatever your next so, question. So, the black mass was the bridge between the gap. What? Mm -hmm. What's next for for Inhuman? Ah, uh, thank you for asking that question. I Good was question. Waiting for that. Um. So I. So the initial plan with the Inhuman project was to kind of start the project with an album drop to explain the story and everything behind it because I got. I literally got like, I don't know, 10 pages of notes and everything about the backstory of the character. Um, and 
I worked a bit longer on the album than expected and especially on the art direction. And what's next now is the album release, um, which will be my first Inhuman album. And it's, it's kind of, yeah, the, the first real Inhuman project, if that makes sense. Because so far, everything was just trying out how far I can push my audience sound-wise. Um, I had one, the Damnation Tapes was really techno-focused. Um, the Black Mass thing was obviously more dubster focus. Collision was kind of between metal and and electronic music, whatever fuckery. Um, and the album now is pretty much kind of a combination of everything, um, but definitely the first real vision of the Inhuman project and the first time I'm able to kind of tell more of the story than just like three or four songs on an EP or something. So yeah, the first single is dropping in February, end of February Ooh. probably, and I just got the visualizer and the artwork back a few days ago, and it's it's mind blowing. It looks insane and completely different from anything I know so far. So I'm pretty excited how people will like that. Yeah. Is there chat wants to know if there's a particular show that you've played in your career that stands out more than the rest? I think so far it's uh, Rampage Open Air. I knew it. I knew it. Um, because, again, it was the first time showing like the, the true vision of the Inhuman project sound-wise. Um, I prepared, like I don't know, three or four months for that set. And it worked out perfectly. It was like a few thousand people. So it was, it, it was crazy. It was definitely a mind-blowing moment. Is there, is there a time when you can recall the worst set you've ever played? Every artist has the worst set. Something goes wrong. It's happened to every band, every oh, yeah. artist. What is your worst performance? Maybe it wasn't so your there, fault. <laughs> there's there's actually two. Um, one was back in the Cold Pandorum times. Um, I went to Lyon in France. And I played that club, I don't know, two times already. And I, I love that venue. I love the crowd. And I was playing with, um, with Figure, if you know him. Um, and back in the days, I was a big fan of him. And it was my show with Figure. And I was like, hell yeah. Holy shit, let's do that. And um, yeah, at, at the beginning, like before my set figure came to me and we talked for the first time. Amazing guy, amazing human being for sure. And um, he told me, oh, I don't know what to do after you. I know your music is way heavier than mine. So I was like, oh my God, this this will be insane. Like he's giving <laughs> me the praise and everything. I was like, damn, fanboying hard, you know. And then I went on stage. I had two USB sticks. I put the first in, corrupted. I put the second in and it did not load any cue point. And back in the days, I did not know how to DJ for shit. As I said, I was, I don't know, 18 years old or something. I played three or four sets before that. And actually a few more because I played at Easy a few times already. But not, not that much that I really know how to DJ properly without cue points that prepare me a lot, you know. So I was like, okay, I have to freestyle all this. And literally everything went wrong every transition was trash the the bpm changed from time to time it was just a hot mess um the crowd loved it though but i was sweating my ass off like i was running from cdj to cdj because i was not prepared for that at all <laughs> and back in the days i i i had like 20 more kilograms on me and um i i was a fat guy and running around on the cdjs and my mask was dripping water out of it and it was it was a mess dude um but the Work people out. liked it so I'm okay. <laughs> cool. You live um, to tell the tale. The, and the, the second one was actually on my first America tour that was uh, just a few months ago. Um, because we... So the planning of the tour was kind of a mess. And um, we had... After one show, we had to drive to Rochester um, to play another show. And the drive was like eight or nine hours, I think. And I noticed that I'm getting sick, like I'm getting a flu or something. I, I did not know, really know what happened. Um, but right before the show, it got so worse that I was not really able to think what I'm doing. So I went to the show, I played my set, and after the set, I just... I, the whole set was like, I, it was like really, really diffuse and, and just, just weird feeling, you know? <laughs> And after the set, I went from stage, I took off my mask and I just puked on the at the corner of the backstage. So that was the worst set probably, but the other one is funnier, I think. <laughs> For sure. Uh, both yeah. good stories. Uh, yeah, kind of, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Vitalik, go ahead and shoot off one or two more. Um, 
Okay, so what uh, what other producers do you plan on working with this year? Um, so there's a few things laying around already. I'm not really allowed to talk about. I got one collab started with Muerta, if you know that guy. Yep. Um, he's he's getting pretty big at the moment, and I I just love his sound. Um, then there's a drum and bass ish collab with Black Rose. He's from Belgium. And on the album, there will be um, a few vocal features. So lately, I'm really focusing on just collaborating with artists that deliver something else than just um, electronic music production. Because honestly, most of the time, I <laughs> that sounds like I'm a dickhead. I'm not like that. But most of the time, I'm like, OK, why should I work with this producer when I can do it better? Um, you know what I mean, right? I feel it's it. Just, I, I know my sound, I know how I want my sound to be, so I'm just looking for people who can deliver something else to that, like guitarists, vocalists, and people like that to, to bring something different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's that's kind of how I work at the moment. If, uh, or Metallic, did you have another one? Uh, do you, so, you did a lot of like songs uh, in between the bridging of the gap between both projects. Mm -hmm. How yep. many of them like are released that are still like code, but that are titled in human? Um, definitely a few. So, um, actually, the Black Mass EP, I I made that when I already was in human. Most of it, at least, I think, lost on that was back in the Code Pandorum uh, times, which is the least Code Pandorum ish song there. Um. But I think right now it, it must be like five or six songs that are more Code Pandorum songs than Inhuman songs, but kind of work in between that gap. You you just said it. Um, there's also a few songs on my on my hard drive, obviously that are not released that are Code Pandorum songs. But I will I will just not release them because they don't really fit what I'm doing now. What does your What does your hand say with all with all the ink right there? This yeah. Um, that's uh, you know H.P. Lovecraft. Is that, I don't think so. You don't think so. He's he's um an a writer like of horror stories and stuff, and he inspired um many many horror movies and is a big inspiration to my stuff. And that's like like a symbol from from the Necronomicon. You know yeah. you know Evil Dead, right? Of course. Yeah, they they read the Necronomicon. That's based on H.P. Lovecraft, for example. Okay. Do you see the trailer yeah, so for the for the scene. new Evil Dead movie? I did not. Dude, it looks quite. Yeah. Remember the first time you saw the remake trailer for Evil Dead, and yeah. there's like the chainsaw, the blood everywhere, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. it looks just as good as the first time you oh, saw damn. the trailer. It's so pretty, it, very is it gory. Just as as gritty and dark as the remake, or is it more like funny? Because I just saw some screenshots, and it does not look that evil. If that makes it sense, it, uh, it looks like a brighter film than yeah, right? the other Evil Dead movies, but it does look more. It's more gritty than the last one. Okay. It, it appears. Okay. Because yeah. I, I love the remake, you know, because it was like, okay, they took the original one, but made it like fucking dark instead of right. just. It's going to be dark. It's going to be dark. It's going to be okay, dark. Okay, In the trailer, nice. the, like the possessed girl jumps on the, on, jumps on somebody and has a tattoo needle yeah. gun. And it gets like oh, this this far from someone's eyeball in the trailer. It's like it's going. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So it looks it looks like it's gonna be gory. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. I, think, I love yeah. a good gory movie. <laughs> oh, Do you, BG, same, there's, same. there's a question in chat, by the way. Okay. Uh, someone. Uh, are you you can ask. Corrupt wants to know: Do you plan on doing a collab with Storm at, or Swarm anytime soon? So the thing is, we started one. Uh, we both aren't happy with it, so we will eventually start another one. We talked about it a few times, so it's definitely planned. And I, I love Bruce. Was it Bruce? It was Brandon. Brandon Bruce. We talked about Bruce. Now I'm like, okay, he had his name has to be Bruce. Um, <laughs> but but Swarm is is an amazing guy, and I would love to work with him for sure. But um, his schedule is pretty tight, and mine as well with the album release now. So um, we will definitely do it eventually one day. But um, at the moment, it's just. Kind of stressful, I think. Also, yes, I'm. Do you plan, uh, sorry. Do you plan on coming back out to America, and do you plan on coming to California on that tour? Um, absolutely, absolutely. We. So I just talked yesterday with um, my new agent, actually, my my upcoming agent, and we still have to talk through some things. Um, but we definitely plan to come back for sure, um, and hopefully better planned out than last time. <laughs>
do you uh let's say hypothetically all of a sudden one of your tracks is in some movie and there's just the craziest mm -hmm. paycheck ever attached to it mm -hmm. and and you've you've taken care of family you've taken care of friends you've got you've got more gear what is a really cool way that you would treat yourself with this huge paycheck that just came in oh, i i love that question um actually actually a good one so you said gear is not included right yeah you, you already it's so much money you already bought all the gear that you want but you got a okay, bunch left okay. over yeah um so actually i would probably renovate my um my whole apartment um because it's it's the house from my parents and um my my wife moved here and we have like our own apartment and everything but the bathroom um the balcony and our um, bedroom is kind of trash so it, it it's you can live there you know but you you kind of want to step it up a notch and you just want to to have like a like a comfy place there's like these these whole little things like okay when you take a shower there's always some water on the floor and shit like that these really really small things that you don't have to take care of because it's not annoying enough but if you would be able to take care of like with a with a snap um it would be fucking nice i think that's what i would do definitely oh yeah metallic we've got time for one more question each I'll let you end it, Metallic. I'm going to ask my final question. I just want to know if there's a piece of advice that you'd give to someone that just picked up some CDJs or some tables and wants to do mm -hmm. what you do. What what advice would you give them as far as trying to get to, to your level? Yeah. Um, I think the most important thing is to not really focus on the DJ aspect, but focus on the, um, on the music production aspect. Because... DJing these days and just um, yeah, just dropping music is is not really hard. Like when you have the 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 most current um, uh, version of the CDJs and stuff, it's literally just pressing the knob at the right time and it will do everything on its own. So that's not the hard point. The hard point is getting into production and kind of getting into production um, early enough. I think that's a that's a big thing because when you start in your 30s or something to to produce music you will have a hard time to kind of um yeah follow everyone else and and be like like on the verge of being really interesting and good um soon enough then maybe when you're 40 you will make good music and then no one is interested anymore so it's it's kind of hard to give someone an advice um instead of just telling him do whatever you want do whatever you like and don't get yourself um, yeah, pushed into one direction that you don't want to go. I think that's pretty important. Great advice. Metallic, last question for Sven. So what is your advice for somebody that just picked up FL Studio or mm -hmm. something and they want to start producing, but you you personally think that they could be better? What, what, what mm -hmm. would their your advice be to them? Uh, my advice would be <laughs> send my wife an email and schedule a tutoring lesson with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dude. I didn't even know you offered that. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do, um, and it's it's going pretty well. Like so far, everyone is really satisfied. Um, so I'm I'm just happy to promote that here again. Um, what is your honestly to? Do I, I was just gonna ask really quick. What's your preferred method if somebody is interested in in getting that that tutoring? How would mm. you like them to contact you? Or so I know I can, you said through your just, wife, but uh, but yeah, I don't know if necessarily um, want to drop the email unless unless that's up to you. Uh, I just drop it in the chat real quick, and Perfect. honestly, just just hit her up. Um, just put the topic uh, tutoring or something in there, and um, just explain a bit who you are and everything, and um, she will take care of everything else. Um, she's pretty amazing with uh, scheduling and talking to people and everything. Um, so. Yeah, if you want to join, definitely do that. Um, slots are running pretty fast at the moment. It's working out pretty good. Um, but just to give one one other advice is, um, yeah, pretty much again, uh, try yourself out. Don't try to push yourself into a direction just because it works at the moment. And don't do it for the money. I think that's the most important thing. Because lately I had some uh, confrontations with people that seemingly only did it for the money. And um, that was just kind of freaking annoying and it obviously yeah. did not work out when you quit your job and you're like okay i have 1000 monthly listeners now i definitely can live from that it it will not work out it will just <laughs> not
Sven, I know it's late over there. Thank you so much for, for giving us your time, your knowledge, My advice. Pleasure. This is a lot of fun, brother. We'll support any project you put out. Please do not be a stranger. Maybe in like six <laughs> to seven months, we can touch base again, see what's going Absolutely. on in your life. And uh, you're just an absolute pleasure, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. See you next time. See you next time, sir. And enjoy the stream. Yes. <laughs> Appreciate it. Bye-bye. In human. Hell yeah.